Hello everyone and welcome to Quilters Headquarters with Lori Kern in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're working on block three of London Blues tonight. And if you've been following my series, you know that I am doing mine out of a different fabric. This is what block three looks like. Okay, uh, you might not be able to see it on camera, but these are actually two flying geese. So the black and white version is this. So the first part that we're going to be working on is our flying geese units right here. And then we'll sew those two together. So I have mine kind of situated already. We're pairing... Um, fabrics 9 and 10, and fabrics 3 and 9. So in my color version, this is fabric 9, and this is, uh, let's see, this one is, this. I'm using a line from Henry Glass called Plant Kindness, and this one is fabric 3. So 3 and 9, and 9 and... 10. All right, so that's my lineup. So I've already gotten started here a little bit. When we are making the flying geese units, I like to use Deb Tucker's Studio 180 wing clipper. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that we make a lot of flying geese with the uh, wing in a prayer pattern. By the way, London Blues is created by wing in, a prayer, wing in a prayer design. And so I am using the wing clipper way of making my flying geese units. And what I like to do each and every time is eliminate the extra two layers that's right there. Let me see if I can get a close up of what I'm doing. So I lay a ruler, the edge of my ruler from corner to corner, like so. And I draw a line. This, of course, is after I've put my three and an eighth inch squares on the larger square. I draw a line right there that's going down, basically down the middle from corner to corner here. And I do it at the same here. And you may have noticed, or maybe you can't see it on camera, but I also draw my two lines, my sewing lines. I'm using my Quilter's Magic Wand again, also by Studio 180. There's an etched line down the middle of the wand, and that is laying corner to corner on my three and an eighth inch squares. And I draw a line on both sides of the ruler, like so, and those are gonna be my sew lines. And then the middle part that I drew a line on, I cut away. I just use my scissors and I only do this on two of the squares. These are three and an eighth. And then I lay it back down. I lay this in the corner, matching the background corner. And as you can see, these two meet right here. All right, that just eliminated two layers in the peak of the flying geese unit. I'm going to go ahead and sew these two lines. And like I said, I, I didn't uh, draw my sewing lines or cut the middle out of my other two pieces for this. And you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and sew. Okay, I went ahead and sewed both of my units. And now I'm going to cut them in half right between the lines. I'm going to do two at once. As long as I match up that corner and that corner, I should be safe enough to do all of them at once. So I'll lay my ruler down there. J 
just like that. Okay. And now I'm going to take them over to my iron and I am going to press this way. And I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. The next step is to lay this square in this corner. Now, if you've noticed, I didn't draw my sewing lines on this square. And the reason for that is I am going to use my um, my diagonal seam tape here. I have it laid down. The red line is my needle line and a quarter inch to the right is my quarter inch seam on this black line and to the left it's a quarter inch to the left of the needle. So I am going to follow the black line which is lined up with the right side of my quarter inch foot. I am going to follow from the corner to the corner along this black line. You'll see what I mean. Here we go. This saves me a little time of marking. So I line that corner of my fabric up to the right side of my foot. And then down here, I'm going to, I take one, one, maybe two stitches up here just to anchor my fabric under my needle. And then I line up this corner with this quarter inch line right there. Saves me a lot of time. And I follow that line all the way up. And then I continue to do that with the rest of these. And then I'll turn it around and go down the other side. Cut these apart. You guys have seen me do this before if you're following this series. Just like so. And now I'll turn it around and I will sew to the left the other side. You know what I mean. So I follow the corner this way and follow it right down. Easy peasy, right guys? Get my junk out of the way. See how easy that was? No marking. Saves me a little bit of time. And then the next step I will do is cut these apart right down the middle. Right between these two lines. It's time to get a new blade. All right, so you get to make four flying geese at once, which happens to be the number that we need. Easy peasy, done kind of quick. So now I'm going to take these over to my iron and I will iron them out that way. Okay, next step. I'm going to go ahead and trim. Now I use my, my flying geese ruler, uh, my wing clipper from Studio 180 Design, wing clipper. And we are making a two and a half by four and a half inch flying goose. My two and a half line is here, four and a half here. 
And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to follow this line, which goes all the way down the full length of the ruler here diagonally. And then this line, which is my four and a half inch line. Those lines, the first line will lay on this seam here. The second line will lay on this seam here and we'll meet right at the peak. So just like this. My first line on this seam, my second line on this seam, and I meet right at the peak. I'll go ahead and trim this. Now if you're left-handed, which I know some of you are, you're actually going to turn your ruler like this and line it up the same way, but then you'll cut left up the left side and over the top. Alright, so this is the side I trimmed up, this side here. I'll turn my goose around and now I'm going to lay it on my four and a half here and my two and a half here and my X, my X will meet right at the peak. Just like that. Easy peasy. One of the things that um, I do and is also instructed with uh, the directions with wing and a prayer pattern is I cut the squares, the wings, they're cut at three and an eighth. The directions on the instructions with the wing clipper, I believe say cut them at three. I always add an eighth of an inch to what those instructions say with the wing clipper just because it gives me just a little bit more to trim off. Otherwise sometimes I come up short here or short here and adding just that eighth of an inch is just perfect. So I'm going to take these over to a taller cutting table and I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. So, the next step is to sew these guys together. And I shall look at the directions and see just like this, okay? So they do go together just like that. And I will sew them all together when it comes to doing this, it's really nice not to have two extra layers right in this seam. So don't forget to cut those extra layers out. So I'll go ahead and sew this together and we'll have our first set of units made. Some of you ask what sewing machine I sew on. I have a Juki. It's called the J150. It does have a Japanese name. I don't remember what it is though. Anyway, I do love this machine. It's a high speed straight stitch only machine. And it does sew over humps and bumps. With ease, I don't have any trouble jumping over that. All right, so these are sewed together. Not sure where I put my cutting gizmo, but this is only four of them, so. All right, and so because I have extra seams right there, I'm going to press to this side. This only has one fabric to fold over. So I'll go ahead and press these four just like that. So pressing it that way. Wow, aren't they pretty? Look at that, perfect points every time. Isn't that neat? And like I said, I pressed them all towards the peak. Cool, all right, so those four units are done. Next up is uh, this unit right here. 
So pretty easy. We're just going to sew the short ones to our middle two and a half inch squares. We're going to make four of these. So the first up is, and you always want to make sure you lay them out like your picture, right? So like that, and then like that. Of course, they're not going to fit when you're laying them out, but they will fit once you sew in your seam allowance. All right, so I'll go ahead and get these sewn together, and I'll be right back. directions say to pre press away from the middle square so I will go ahead and press like that and I'll be right back I always lay them out again so that I sew them on the correct side and so I'll take these over I'm gonna flip them as I take them over but they will be still correct Okay, I've got these parts of the unit sewn together. Everything's pressed outward. And I'll lay them back down. Next, I'm sewing these two together. We'll get this done in a jiffy. Make sure my layout still matches the directions, and it does. And continue on. Okay, so these units are done. Next up is putting it all together for block number three, right? Yes, block number three. All right, I'm gonna go press, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so next step is laying them all out. So we want it to look like this when we get done. You notice that I didn't even pay attention to light versus dark when I was um, choosing my fabric so I really have no idea how it's going to come out. I just love this line of fabrics and I basically just chose based on the amount of fabrics that was used. Kind of like you would do if you were doing a mystery quilt. That way you just really never know what you're going to get. And so, I kind of like it. So mine is laid out like wrong. See, this is why you have to compare. Although I do kind of like that star too. <laughs> All right, so it's supposed to look like this. If I had made it like the star, I wouldn't have been too disappointed. I kind of like the star as well. So I'll go ahead, sew these together, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, I just quickly wanted to show you how I pressed these. So these will be going that way, away from the middle. And the middle row will go towards the middle. And that way, these two seams will nest really nicely with one seam going one way. I don't know if you can see that or not. And the other seam going the other way. So I'll go ahead and sew these together now. There it is. What do you think? I like it. I think it's real pretty. I uh, ended up pressing the last two seams open. They do get a little bit full in some spots, but a good 
steam iron and it laid down flat so I hope you enjoyed this uh, please like my video and subscribe and I will put all my gadgets that I'm using uh, down below thanks again get some close-ups